Hi everyone, it is Ryan here on the Syntax Byte, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use CSS Flexbox to create a two column layout on a website. So to start off here I just have a basic HTML template and I've only thrown a couple of just font family sans serif margin zero on the body in the style.css. Um, I do have a reference available that we're going to use to quickly build out some of this content and then we can start playing around with some of the CSS properties. So to start with, we're going to want to think about how we're going to structure our content. So with Flexbox, typically you have a container and then items within that container. So we want our two columns to be the items within that container. We want them to each be their own thing. So I'm going to use the section tag, but you could use just a div if you wanted to. And then those two columns need to be inside their own wrapper that uh, fixes the width of the entire site. So to start with, I want a div. I'm going to call the, give this a class of wrapper. And this is going to be what we're going to put the display flex uh, property on. And this is the wrapper that is going to cover our entire site. And our two columns are going to fit within this wrapper. So then we need our two columns. And I'm going to make these sections. I'm also going to give them a class. So this is going to be left and left and then I need a right section as well okay and that all just needs to shove over a little bit perfect so now within these sections I'm gonna put a couple article tags so that we have some content available I'm just gonna move these over from uh, a template I'm I'm working with here so I will have uh, an articles in this side that are our posts. So we'll, we'll go ahead and create like four of them or so. Okay, so under my left side, I'm going to have some posts, and on the right side, I'm just going to have a little bit of sidebar items. So we're going to have like an about me section and sort of a contact us section. So that should be good right there. So to start off with, we can just see how the content lays out naturally once we just put this in here. So let's go ahead and go back to Firefox, we'll reload. And okay, so everything just kind of displays how we would think. It displays all on top of each other with you know each article being a full width of the page. Uh, so this isn't quite what we want. What we want is we want these to top four here to all be in their own column and then we want these two bottom two which are going to be sidebar items to be in a slightly smaller column off to the right. So to start with Flexbox offers quite a bit of functionality so we can just go ahead and uh, apply it onto our wrapper. So we can do a dot wrapper for the wrapper class and we we'll just do display flex and we'll just see what that does for us in terms of the default functionality. And we can see Flexbox does almost exactly what we want. Uh, just by applying Display Flex, it's taken our two columns and it's positioned them beside each other. So remember that this, this property needs to go on the wrapper and then we have two elements within. So we can see kind of how this is working if we open the web inspector. So we have our wrapper that shows the entire site and then we have a section and we have another section here. And we can see kind of how this is working here. Item was set to shrink. Item was set to shrink, final size. Okay. So it actually starts with a bit of an offset. Now you probably don't want to just live with kind of what it determines for you in terms of the spacing of the content. So you probably want to be a little bit more specific. There's two ways we can be more specific. The first is that we just tell Flexbox what proportions we want the content to be without, um, you know, worrying too much about it. Uh, the next way is that we would just um, specify exact widths in CSS. So let's try the first way. So if we look at uh, dot right, we can do flex two and then, or apologies, we want that to be on our left because we want that to be the larger ones, we can do flex two, and then not dot flex, dot left. And then we can do dot right, 
to flex one. And this will make sure that the right one is, the left one is twice the size of the right. So we can go ahead and go back here and reload. And that's what that looks like. So it's twice the size of the right now. So that's pretty good. That would work in a lot of cases. Um, but you might also want to be a little bit more specific with your widths. Um, so another way to do it is just to do um, flex, or sorry, just, just give them a width. So give them a width, we'll make our left 70% and we'll make our right 30%. Um, this might be a little bit more desirable too if you're um, planning to do media queries where you regularly change the width as the browser size changes. So we can see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. You'll note that you won't actually have trouble setting padding on these. So you can go ahead and set a padding of 50 pixels to start with. And that should be no problem at all because we aren't using flex wrapping. So what a lot of times you run into with Flexbox with padding is a, a box sizing issue, but because we aren't wrapping the content, then it's not a problem. Uh, but if you do ever use flex wrap, you'll just want to set the box sizing on these to border box. Um, so now the one last thing I want to show you is how do we make this stack on top of each other? So we've got our two columns now, this is great. But when the browser window gets really small, I want to go ahead and just stack the two columns on top of each other. So when it gets too small that it's not really reasonable to use columns anymore, I want these to just stack on top of each other. Uh, the easiest way to do it is probably actually just to turn off Flexbox. So if we do an app media only screen and uh, max width is 640 pixels, this will mean that um, anything below 640 pixels, the rules in here will be applied. We can just tell our wrapper to not display as a flex. We can just display it as the default block instead. And what we'll do is we'll do a dot left um, it should be a width of 100% and dot right should be a width of 100% and this should just stack the blocks. So we don't need to use Flexbox at all. The default is just to stack and we'll just make sure that the width is 100%. And so now if we reload, we should be able to make the browser size small uh, and they should stack just like that. Uh, I'm not too sure why the padding doesn't work. Uh, it's probably not working because we didn't set it as border box. So we'll want to go ahead and do a box sizing border box and a box sizing border box. Try that again. Go ahead and give a reload. And now it doesn't create a horizontal scroll bar that was pretty awkward there. So that's how we can get it working with them just stacking on top of each other then. Uh, and that's just showing where because my browser window is small. So perfect, so that is how you do columns with Flexbox and CSS. Lots of options available to you, but that's just a simple column layout. I hope you guys found the video useful, particularly if you're a beginner with Flexbox. Uh, give it a like if you did, subscribe to the channel for more, and I will see you in the next video.